Hello and welcome to the Ken McBride Show for February 14th, 2017. I'm your host, Gary Smith. On today's show, we're going to uh, talk to Coach McBride about uh, last week's game against Gannon and Seton Hill, and we're going to look at this upcoming week's opponent, UPJ and Clarion, and look at the uh, PSAC standings and upcoming schedule. Um, I almost like shampoo, same, you know, just rinse and repeat because it's, it's our it. third or fourth uh, show, Coach. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to go a little out of order this week because I know – uh, last week we were talking a little bit uh, about the Gannon game. You are saying you're hearing some stories from the past. Um, but on Saturday, I think you guys made a, a heck of a story, a legacy story, and a buzzer beater. Yeah, it was a fun game to play. I mean, at least for us, offensively, wasn't very good. They played a zone, and <clears throat> we really couldn't shoot them out of the zone. You know, we were down into foul trouble in the first half. Luca went down in the first half, and, and he came back and played on about a half of an ankle. So... Um, yeah, and then one big shot. So uh, <laughs> keeping us alive in terms of the playoff hunt and um, made practices meaningful for the week. But it was it was fun. It was definitely fun. On that ride on was fun. And we'll uh, talk a little bit more about that because uh, Anthony's by himself in the studio and I have the highlights in a specific order. So we'll actually go back a week uh, to talk about the first game last week, okay. Gannon, a game at home um, against a tough Gannon squad. They're number two in the PSAC, mm -hmm. and I believe after uh, last week they clinched the two spot right. in the PSAC. But um, – you know, a team that we talked about last week that, you know, they're efficient on the offensive end and they're responsible on the defensive end. They're just a really complete basketball team, and uh, we knew they were going to defend us very well. I thought our offensive efficiency here about the last five or six games, we got to get better, and we've been working hard at it. Um, but Gannon comes in, and they just make you earn every shot you're going to get. And then off on the offensive end for them, they're going to really make you defend. They're not going to bail you out by taking a bad shot. Um, they're going to rebound it very physically. And I thought we did an okay job, just didn't do enough to beat that caliber of basketball team because um, they've been in those close games and they've won them. You look at their record, they've been in close games and they've won a lot of them. And that's a testament to their senior leadership and guys that have been there a while. So it, it went exactly how we how we thought it would go, just um, the score ended up a little bit backwards, at least in, in terms of what we wanted. But um, it was a battle. And it was another one of those games that seemed like whichever team was going to go on like a six to eight point mm -hmm. run, uh, inside the last 10 minutes was going to get the, the win. And we'll look at these highlights um, from last Wednesday, and you'll see that, you know, even though these are all, you know, offensive highlights, you know, yeah, did like, a great job of staying Games in like that, you know, plays like that that Cordell get, it, it was one of those games to where everything was going to have to be earned. And like you're right, a team that got up six felt like 12 um, because just the style of play um, that it was going to be, we knew it was going to be a half-court type of game. And, and early we came out and made shots, and, you know, team like Gannon, but if you noticed on all these all these situations, it was very difficult for us to get layups um, because when you penetrate, like right there, the ball touches Robel, look at all the, the maroon bodies. They always had a guy between you and the rim, um, so they make every possession a grind. And, you know, we got late in the game, and, you know, when you have to make what we call winning plays, and I thought we had a couple possessions where we took quick shots, and they just don't waste possessions. We had a couple wasted ones, and they didn't. But Tony, again, he's still you know, coming on uh, about the last month, a, a guy that's been really consistent. But uh, our offensive efficiency has got to get a little bit better, and they just make it hard on you. you got to give a credit to Gannon. They make it hard on you and um, make you really grind it out. But I think we're continuing to get better right there. Eric Green, about the last two games, you know, he was a guy that we added here at Christmas break, and he had a really good game there against Gannon, um, kind of getting his momentum going and starting to play and contribute. Um, and, and the bad part is we're still trying to figure out rotation changes kind of every game. But, you know, like there, Gannon's up 11. Feels like 15, 18 in that game. And we get it back to two. And uh, I thought we took a real tough shot uh, coming out of a, uh, of a side out of bounds situation. But uh, the resiliency this team's had, you know, down 11 to Gannon. And, you know, we'll look at it here in a second. Down 14 or whatever it was to Seton Hill. We've been there many times. So these guys really don't flinch, which Says a lot about him, but we got to make shots. Rashawn Brown's got to get his shot um, back again. Um, but I was proud, proud of how we kept competing. I mean, you look at these situations, our defense kind of turned into offense in a couple scenarios, and you have to convert those. When you get those opportunities against good teams, they can't be empty. And we did a good job, really, in these situations, not making them empty in transition with our defense. But half court, I thought we kind of got out of uh, out of character a couple times. But those are easy. Those are high percentage shots. I mean, Tony's not gonna miss those dunks. Yeah. So seven point game, but I think it was a little bit closer than that. I think we had to two with with a minute to go or something in the last possession. And, and um, you know, Gannon just found a way to win those games, and that's the sign. Like we talked about last show, 
the really elite teams win those type of games and guys and teams like California where we're, we're working to get on the hump and get over the hump. We'll get to those games, but um, we'll get to where we're winning those. We're just not we, – we didn't win that one, but we won the one on Saturday. Yeah, and the one on Saturday was, was very big because if you look at the standings, you know, it's getting to be the last four or five mm -hmm. games of the season. Every game's important. Pretty much needed that win to, to stay alive and right. the hunt for the playoffs. And, you know, it was another game, Seton Hill – you know, first time we played them was here, and it was a tough game, and, and you won. But Seton Hill's always a team that's going to give you everything right. they've got. And, you know, another game, your team fought hard down, I think it was 13 or 14 in the second half, and uh, ended up an epic win. Right. We were down, I think, 14 with 12 to go, and um, and it was a slow-down game. The problem is in a game like Seton Hill, even with Gannon, when you get down like that, there's just not very many possessions. I think the total number of offensive possessions that we had was 68. Mm. Um, that's a low number of possessions, and Seton Hill's going to shrink the game. Um, both teams were playing zone, so you knew possessions were going to be hard to come by, and you had to maximize every one. And, um, yeah, we were really behind the eight ball. And in a game where if Seton Hill wins, they're in the PSAC West tournament. Um, we have to win to stay alive in the tournament. Uh, it gave us the tiebreaker against Seton Hill, so if we can somehow get to where we're tied with them, it, gives us, it was just a really big – there was a lot on the line for us, and we had to play in a little bit of a desperation mode. And Luca started – Luca and Cordell really started seeing the ball go in the basket. And um, – Guys started relaxing because we just didn't have the ball going to basket before then and kind of made plays down the stretch, made some made some bonehead plays there to give them some opportunities, but we made the last one. So, yeah, big win. I tell you what, whenever we were doing the game in the timeouts, you know, we're, we're, the common thread was when oh, I was talking to the announcers, like this is just a, this is what you want to call a basketball mm -hmm. game to be, kind of what you talked to. The crowd was into it. You know, that building's a small building, so any noise in there is going to be amplified. Right. And it, it was just a, a great effort. And then um, – you know, with Luca going out in the first half, and then almost like Willis Reed coming back, mm -hmm. uh, whenever he, we saw him go out, that, I mean, that gave us a little bit of a pump. I can only imagine what the rest of the team thought, seeing him gut it out. Yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't expect him to come back. Whenever and, and and talked to him after it happened, and uh, he seemed pretty banged up. And we walked down at halftime, and he was getting taped. And I just thought the trainers were taping mm -hmm. him just to prevent the swelling. And I asked him, and he said, "Now I'm coming back." I said, "Okay." So we put him out in his first rotation there in the second half, and he wasn't really moving well. Um, and I think it was just the tightness of it. And then as the, we brought him out and we put him back in, he kind of, I think, let, he got over it mentally. And it always helps him see the ball go in. I think he made five threes <laughs> in the second half. When the shots start going in, he, his ankle suddenly the pain hurting, goes away. Yeah, stops hurting as much. <laughs> um, but, yeah, made big plays. I mean, that was something that shows a lot of resi resiliency on his end because I don't know if early in the season, not saying he wouldn't have, but, we were still getting to that point to where, hey, guys, it's February and mm -hmm. everybody's banged up. And we had to have him play through, and he played through and made some plays. And we'll take a look at these highlights because it was an instant classic over in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. As we see right here, you know, first half, you guys got out to a pretty good run. Yeah, you know, we knew they were going to play zone, so one of our pressing points offensively was we have to push the ball in transition and we have to try to beat the zone down the court as early as we can because we had some success doing that with them up here as um, – just getting the ball up the court and don't stop and set up offense. Uh, that's what they want you to do, and we want to keep the ball moving. And the other thing we did was we have a lot of continuities from a zone offense, and we went more to, um, as coaches, dictate the action a little bit better. And and I thought we we started on fire 7-0. I think they responded with like a some gun ungodly run. Um, and it was just that type of half to where neither the guys, I don't know how you found so many clips of us making shots. I think we walked in at halftime and, we're shooting 35% or something. And, um, you know, they can run that zone with Kaysen down there. My goodness, he blocked seven shots. Felt like he affected another 10 shots. And Tony even said to me, like, it's just hard to get a good look down there. And um, so when you've got those opportunities like you got right there, you have to convert them. But he just makes things so difficult against that zone because he just affects so many shots. And then you have to be able to make shots from the perimeter. I had somebody ask me before, how do you beat the zone? Well. You've got to get into the seams, and you ultimately have to make some threes and stretch it out. And we went through a little stretch right there where we did. Jacob Thibodeau, I mean, a guy who hadn't played probably 10 minutes all season, logged 14 minutes that game, hits a three, and one thing, took a huge charge mm -hmm. um, at the five-minute mark. That, that changed um, momentum. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, we talk all the time, but charge is the most unselfish thing you can do because you're typically not taking on your own guy. You're putting him one closer to the bonus. You're giving us the ball. and. You know, he just kind of kept adding to the run, but big minutes by him. And, you know, we talked to Robel going in. He needed to get, if they're going to play zone, he needed to get five or six three attempts up. And um, he found those spots. And then he said, there's Luke again. 
you didn't see him, you know, well, you see him limping a little bit. I figured he'd feeling good after the three makes, but <clears throat> we got right there, and that's what, right there's a case of point where we needed to beat the zone down the court. We kind of kept him in scramble mode um, and gave us the lead there that we had fought so hard for. And coming down the stretch, that was, I don't know who knocked that one in, but that, that was, well. <laughs> yeah, that was, <laughs> didn't have any business going in, but banks it in. And then late in the game, you know, we just kind of kept playing. And we had a call coming off of the free throw. They kind of executed it off of a live ball set. And to make that shot over Kaysen for the win, I mean, that's a, we had to have it. And, you know, we didn't have, I think, I don't know if we had a timeout or not, but we, we had we had worked on this situation. We've been working on late games because we've been in those situations a lot this year. So we spent a lot of time working on three minute, two minute situations and to where these guys can handle it without us. They know what we want to be in. They're all on the same page. And Cordell did a good job right there leading into that situation. They're shooting a free throw with seven seconds. He doesn't even look at me. He knows what the team's supposed to be in. He knows what we're supposed to be running. We don't need to call a timeout. I mean, what I call all the timeouts, what you're going to do, what he already had planned. And <laughs> um, and they did it. So we can stand over there as coaches. We've talked all year about the basketball team will become really good when you can do this without us. And right there was a prime example of those five guys. They got organized and knew what they wanted to get without us. And in late game situations, if you can make two or three passes, typically you'll get a shot because – the defense always ball watches. Mm -hmm. They always want us. They always want to ball watch. And we got what a handoff and a pass back, and you got a clean look, um, albeit over the best shot blocker in the league. But you get a clean look, and um, you know, knocked it in. But coming out of at the end of the game, our guys told me that at halftime they said Cordell only shoots those corner threes. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm glad he practiced at halftime <laughs> in that corner because that ended up being the one we needed. Well, I tell you what, you, you mentioned just that you practice that and you go through the situations but you know that was amazing that you know when the rebound happened no one panicked mm -hmm. you know you got like you said you got the handoff uh Luca made the pass I mean some players might have just chucked it up with three seconds yeah. at a double to get that open shot I mean as soon as it left court left Cordell's hand where we were sitting I mean that that looked pure you never want to you never think that but it looked pure and, and that was just great to see the reaction uh, for the bench, you got I me. Mean, yeah. It was just great to see. I'm glad you saw it because from our angle, when when Kaysen jumped up to block it, he just didn't golf score. You know, Cordell's 5'8", he's 6'9". So when he jumps up to block it, Cordell just disappears. And the only thought I thought was, uh, the only thought I had was I wanted to see the ball get over his hand. So I'm watching just please clear his hand. He's blocked so many shots today. And it cleared it. And if you watch it, Robel knew it was going in about <laughs> a foot before it comes in. He doesn't know what to do. He runs to our bench. Doesn't know where the celebration's going to be. <laughs> so, yeah, to to have the guys experience that um, and to get the monkey off our back. We talked about winning a road game. Heck, we haven't run a, won, a, won a true road game in over two years. Mm -hmm. So to win it in whatever fashion we win it, we'll take it. We'll start the bus up. We'll get out of the, we'll get out of town because we're not giving it back. And um, hopefully it can carry momentum um, leading into tomorrow. And I've seen a couple different angles of that shot. Like I said, that – when we were coming back, everyone's like, where's the shot? Where's the shot? I'm like, well, we're stuck at dinner right now. <laughs> it'll, it'll get up as soon as I get back. But, you know, I saw a, sh a clip of it from the scores table. I don't know who took it. It looked great. And mm -hmm. then our clip and then the, uh, the photographer there saw a couple different angles of that. And it's just, like I said, just to see the shot go up, I mean, that's what college athletics is all yeah. about. I mean, that's why you do the games. That's why, you know, everyone asks, what's your favorite part? Like, you never know what's going to happen. And for a finish like that, that's just – yeah, and, and I wanted to bring up that at the end of the game to kind of show you the program that Monaco has over there. The game ends and, you know, how Seton Hill feels in that scenario. I've been on that other end mm -hmm. to where you don't know how to react. You feel so terrible. And, and their senior, the Davis kid, who missed a free throw, he goes and grabs the ball and starts working on his free throws. And oh, wow. I told the guys, that, I said, if, if you want to talk about how to be a student athlete and how to be a college athlete, like that's what it's about. He grabbed the ball, and when we're shaking hands – he went over, shot two free throws, and then came and shook their hand with a smile. Just very cordial, very, um, very respectful. And I hope we respected them back in that manner because that's what's hard. Sometimes in those scenarios, you don't show respect for your opponent mm -hmm. in a game like that. And I hope that we reflected the same way they reflected to us. But when he grabbed that ball and went and shot free throws, it says a lot about him as a person. And unfortunately, uh, we can't dwell on that game too too much yeah. because the calendar keeps going and uh, we're into another week. And, uh now every game is very important. I mean, not that they weren't mm -hmm. important before, but now final four games. Um, this week, uh, a home game on Wednesday against UPJ, and then Saturday at Clarion. But we'll talk about UPJ first. Second time we've seen them, and you know, a dynamic offensive team yeah. over in Johnstown. They are. They're special offensively. If you look at 
the numbers are staggering and and that they assist on 70% of their makes. Like, that's an ungodly number. They shoot 42% from three as a team. They have two guys shooting 48% from three. They're just a really hard cover, and what makes them hard is they're skilled, they're smart, and they're unselfish. So that make they put a lot of pressure on you every defensive possession. Now, there's going to be a lot more possession in this game than, say, C. Neal because UPJ is going to play a little faster. They're going to get into their action quick. Um, but it's one of those games to where, as a coach, you want every defensive possession to be perfect. Well, it's just not going to be because they're too good. Um, you're going to have to work really hard to make them take statistically the shots you wanted to take. But um, you're not going to be able to stop Dell Clancy from getting a three. You're not going to be able to stop A.J. Leahy from getting a three off. I mean, as much as you want, you're just not going to be able to do it. So we got to make sure we make them tough, but know that it's going to be a game where we're going to have to score the basketball because they're going to score it, and they're going to score it well. And I was up the, at that game doing radio for the first matchup, and it seemed like they, you know, they move the ball a lot. I mean, for, for a play-by-play -play announcer on radio, you're trying yeah. to call every pass. It seemed like they're having three or four passes and then getting back and, you know, just a lot of motion on the offense. That's – if you, Rukavina, when, when Coach Rukavina was in the Mountain East back – or actually it was the West Virginia Conference back when I was there, I mean, he had these type of teams. And me and him have had numerous discussions about how he, he gets very skilled players. I mean, he, get, he goes out and recruits skilled guys, and you can hear him on the bench say pass and catch. And I know as simple as that sounds, but – his guys can all pass and catch, and they can all shoot. So you're right. When they, whatever action they're running, the players don't stop. And every time the ball gets to a shooter, it's on, it's on target, it's on time, it's got zip on it. So, yeah, good luck as the radio announcer <laughs> trying to get the names out before the ball moves because these guys share and share a lot. And with, I think, 521 assists, that's averaging 20 mm -hmm. a game. That's, that's, getting, it that's done. getting it done. And that, uh, that game is this uh, Wednesday night at the Convocation Center, 7.30. Come on out. There was a big crowd last week, I thought, for uh, the Gannon game. Yes. First, pretty much the first Wednesday night back since the semester started. That's what's so weird anymore with the schedule. It's, you play so many games, you know, when the break's not in, and then whenever you finally get back, you know, we're already, already talking about come out because there's only like four or five games Correct. left. So come on out, wear your red and black, because every game is important. Yeah, and with where we are right now, we're in a um – we have an opportunity, you know, when you start 0-8 in the league, which is what we put ourselves behind the eight ball, but we have a chance. You see here we're, we're two games behind Seton Hill, Mercyhurst, and Slippery Rock, So, you, and you have the tiebreaker against Seton Hill. Um, I don't know about the tiebreaker with Slippery Rock, and then we still have Mercyhurst on the schedule. So where we sit, we're out, but we essentially control our destiny and being able to get in. That's why the win against Seton Hill is huge. It gives us the tiebreaker, um, and they've played one more game. So we have an extra game ahead of them. Um, to play, so we have an opportunity to do it. And when you start zero and eight, what's that make us six and four in our last yeah. ten? So you, we're getting better, and we have an opportunity. And it's fun. These guys, we really want them to play our way in because nobody on the roster has ever played in the PSAC yeah. tournament. And um, we're we're moving in the right direction. We're playing better. And tomorrow's game against Pitt Johnstown is, is huge, and uh, it'll be fun. So I do hope people come out and, and support the guys. And the crazy thing, if you look at the standings, I mean. Only IUP and Gannon have clinched. They've clinched one and two. Yeah. There's so much movement that could happen in the next four games. I mean, you could see, you know, you see you guys go up to, in the middle. You could see a pitch on right. drop all the way down. It's just, yeah, you know, Mercy it's just so close. Mercy Earth and, Slip and Seton Hill, I believe, play each other tomorrow, I think. So you're going to have some shake up there. But you're right. It's just so muddled right there between three, four, five, six, and seven to where there can be a lot of a lot of moving and shaking. But you got to win. This is what we've talked about. The good teams – uh, they're tournament ready. The older teams, the experienced teams, the the the, the good. That they just win in March or they win in February. And right now is the time where you separate yourself. You, you jockey for position. And I think we're playing at a level to where we can win. We can beat anybody. So um, I, I feel confident we'll come out and play well tomorrow. And and being home and guys know what's on the line. So we're excited. We're really excited for to to be in this position. And yeah, definitely come on out uh, tomorrow night to the Convocation Center, seven thirty. If for some reason you can't be there, you can uh, listen to the game on ninety one point nine FM or. Watch the game, uh, the CUTV feed on calvalkins.com, and you see, Coach, here's the next uh, mm -hmm. four games, and this last four games of the regular season. It always amazes me when those games can – the final games of the season can fit on one graphic. But, yeah. you know, two home, two on the road. Right. We, uh, can, like we just talked about, we can play our way in, we can play our way out. And, and um, your two home teams are the two guys you have at home are, the, are two of the top dogs in IUP and, and Pitt Johnstown, and then on the road to Clarion and, and Mercer, two teams that we were fortunate to get at home. And, um, two, you got to win, and, and now hopefully we got that road monkey off of our back um, that we can go up and, and be ready for the end stretch. But I think our guys are 
we're a little banged up in terms of Luca, but he'll be fine. And um, you know, we're excited just to have four games here playing down the stretch to where we can play our way in. I mean, that's where we wanted a month ago. That's what we wanted to get, and we're here. And um, it's, you know, I don't know about you being a basketball coach. When the weather changed, I think it was 60 <laughs> degrees this Sunday. When you feel that warm weather coming, it kind of starts telling me what March Madness is mm -hmm. approaching. So um, I wake up with a little different juice than most people probably this time of year. And, Coach, I know uh, we're, you're only looking at Pitch on right now, but for the purposes of TV, uh, the second game this week is that mm -hmm. Clarion team that uh, faced a couple weeks ago at the uh, Convocation Center. Right. Uh, and a game in which I believe they started fouling uh, as soon as the second half started. Yeah. It was a different kind of a game than – I think a lot of people were, were used to, but um, what can we expect from Clarion on Saturday? Um, they're going to be a very – they're they're very well coached. You know, it's my first time through the PSAC West, so, you know, I know the coaches' names but didn't have a chance to prepare against them. Like, I, they do a really good job. I think they, um, they're they going to slow the game down. Um, if I remember correctly, I think they zoned this last mm -hmm. time. Um, but it's going to be your typical PSAC game. They're kind of like us about a month ago. They've been in close games. You went up to Gannon and they lost one they probably shouldn't have lost. Um so they're trying to get over the hump, and any road game in the PSAC is a hard road game. And especially where we are, we're now learning how to win on the road, and to be able to take it up there is going to be big, especially a team that has a little revenge on the mind. Mm -hmm. um, so like you said, we got to worry about UPJ, and don't worry about Clarion. I haven't watched any film on Clarion. Mm -hmm. We've just been focused on trying to find a way to stop this offense. <laughs> well. Coach, uh, like I said, it's, it's an exciting time of year. Like you said, the, the weather's starting to finally. I think, believe today it's going to be like 55 degrees. So uh, March is definitely um, coming fast. So, like I said, come on out and support the team because every game is important. And, and you know, hopefully coming down the stretch, you know, it can make, make life uh, interesting for everybody. And this is, from a player standpoint, uh, yes, I had to talk to the coach the other day. All your memories are made in February and March. Um, nobody really remembers January uh, except the coaches. Now is when the time where you can make your imprint. And we talk to our guys about when, when you leave, when this season is over and they take the team picture down, do people wonder where that team picture is? We want to make it to where people want to know where that team picture is. So um, we're ready. We're excited. We've prepared the right way and um, hope people come out Wednesday and, and show the support to the guys because they deserve it. They've put in the time and they've, they've put in the effort to, uh, to deserve the support around the area. I mean, I can't say it any better because, like I said, if, if you were in that gym on Saturday and saw that, that shot go in, I mean, it felt good for everybody, you know, because have seen the last a couple of close losses mm -hmm. they've had and just to get over that hump and, and win in that fashion. So, like I said, definitely come out because it's, it's an exciting time here and it's an exciting team. I mean, you and your staff have done a great job of, you know, keeping this team in position for a playoff well, berth. Yeah, uh, you, you really got to give the testament to the guys because when you start in that sense, you, when you start the way we started the PSAC, they had every reason to cash it in, start coaching to the finish, but they just decided that wasn't what they wanted to be remembered by. And um, we just kept, well, our message hasn't changed. It's just, it's kind of clicked with them. And success helps when you start winning and feeling better. And you see, as we talk, you can pull the fruits off the tree a little bit. And these guys did, and all of a sudden, um, they see that's the way they want to be. That's why they want to be remembered. So. They get the credit. Heck, we, our message hasn't really changed. <laughs> well, Coach, thanks a lot. Good luck this week. Uh, like I said, come on out to the Convocation Center this Wednesday at 730 uh, and support the team. And uh, if you feel like a nice road trip, it's supposed to be, I think, 60 degrees on Saturday. Uh, Clarion's only about an hour and 45-minute drive, and uh, I can guarantee it's going to be about 90 degrees in the gym because it always is there. <laughs> so uh, you don't have to worry about a heavy jacket up there. So come on out and support the team. That's a 730 game, a rare night game on a Saturday in the PSAC. But like I said, if you can't make it, you can – Keep track of all the Vulcan athletics on 91.9 FM and also KyleVulcans.com, the live video link for uh, the CTV feed. And uh, if live stats are your thing, Matt Kiefer and his stats or staff will keep uh, updating on stats. So, Coach, good luck this week. Uh, you've been watching the Kent McBride Show right here on CTV, and we'll see you next week.